Welcome to Meet the Comedian at the Apple Store Regent Street in London. If you live alone and you don't make plans, here is what happens. You wake up and it just gets darker. <laughs> I caught myself a few weeks ago clutching my cat to my chest saying... We're all right, aren't we? <laughs> are we going to be okay tonight? I know you don't like doing things like this. Are we, are we cool here? I'm really, I'm going to have a lovely time. Mm -hmm. Okay. The DVD uh, Num is being released on iTunes. Um, tell us a little bit about what the show is about. Well, <laughs> what is it about? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, disconnectedness, loneliness, depression. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you're maybe possibly one of the only ones out there sort of shoving depression in people's faces? I think people need to hear about it. Right. You know, otherwise, uh, otherwise people will get the impression that everyone else is happy. And that is not healthy. How could it possibly be beneficial to your life to discuss some of these stories in front of thousands of people? Well, what do you mean? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, no other person would want to share so much. What is, it that, what is it that you get from sharing these hideous stories? Well, I find it gets, it gets them out of me. Once, they, once, I've, once I've written them down and sort of performed them, yeah. they're not, they, it feels like they're not real anymore. It's, there's a, it's a strange thing. They're, they're completely honest. Everything in that show is true. But once it's out of me, it doesn't feel as true to me anymore. I feel like I've transcended whatever that stupid person was up to. Right. What about, I mean, you have to see these people again in life. Oh, yes. Yeah, what's that like? <laughs> um, well, on, on the last uh, stand-up special I did, yeah. I spoke in the opening 20 minutes about an actor who I was quite obsessed with for maybe four to five years. Try six or seven. <laughs> 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 Don't lie now. <laughs> Not only was he on, there was, 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 did I speak about him on that show? Mm. In the sitcom that we made two series of, that was on BBC Two, uh, I created a fictional version of him, <laughs> giving him a name not dissimilar to the actor's actual name. Yes. I then see the actual actor. Do you want to say the actor? No, no, name? I think it's best not to. Because I think then it's still mildly all right. But you just said that you. Hang on, hang on, let me just finish right. the story before you, you ruin my life. <laughs> So I, so I see him in London, uh, where I live, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I say to him, oh, uh, and I think the, the stand-up special had just been on BBC Two, the uh, sitcom was going out, I said, oh, I feel like I should maybe apologise to you a bit. And he said, oh, what, what for? I, uh, and Do you think he had no idea? I said, I've just sort of mildly fictionalised you, <laughs> yeah. and he said... Oh, yeah, I heard about that. So I hadn't seen it. <laughs> like, what do I have to do to get your fucking attention? Do you feel like you struggle to be in the moment? Do you feel that you ever struggle to be present? Yeah, much more than you do, certainly. Yeah. I've witnessed, what do you mean? I've witnessed you being so in the moment <laughs> that it's, uh, it's, it's a worry. <laughs> it's a worry that anyone could live like that. <laughs> we were once on holiday together. We've been on holiday. Oh, God, shut up. What, no? <laughs> This is all right. It's a nice which, little story. Which holiday? The second one. So, uh, so we were. It was New Year's Eve. We were at a hotel, and oh my god, Makita wasn't that keen on on the New Year's Eve event at the hotel we were at. So we were told next door they've got a quite a fun like dinner, not fun, but like a lot more classy Posher. dinner, posher dinner at the hotel next door. Go there. You don't have a reservation. Couldn't make a reservation. But if you just turn up, it might sort of be all right. And they'll feel a bit sorry for you because it's New Year's Eve and uh, they probably won't turn you away. So we get there and they do turn us away because we haven't got a reservation and we're sort of standing there <laughs> and we're going, well, can we talk to the manager? A manager comes out, you're not on the list. And Mickey says, well, we phoned yesterday. They said, we closed the phone line yesterday. It's definitely clear that we're lying. I'm about to say, okay, we'll just go. Then she starts screaming at them <laughs> like she's forgotten that we're lying. <laughs> What did you say? I was just like, how dare you treat us like this? Yeah. <laughs> and Simon had to afterwards go, we are still lying, aren't we? We're still... <laughs> and even when... Even after, like, screaming at these men, <laughs> like, it wasn't, it wasn't just like, how dare you? It was, I'm absolutely fucking appalled. You would treat people this way. <laughs> oh then she God. storms off. I'm left standing with these men. All I can think <laughs> to say is, I'm sorry, she has some problems. <laughs>
And then so in the moment, so committed to it, even when we're back at our hotel, she's still annoyed. What would you say to people that say that now you're the person flogging the product? Like you've become oh, yeah. S Club 7. I have. A lot of people say that. <laughs> you've become S Club 7. Yeah. Yeah. But what would you say to that? I mean, how do you feel? Because I know that you're I don't not like it. I don't like. I don't like rec having to recruit people. I, it's, it, it puts me on edge. I was concerned nobody would come to this because I don't know what. Why and now it, that everyone is here, these yes, are people that have voluntarily yes. come. But they could still leave at any point. <laughs> you still go. Oh no, we've made a terrible decision. Right. I started with television, I suppose, and it felt like the product was the show always. Yes. And now I'm the show. I'm the thing. You're the brand. I'm the. Ugh, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you can be a brand as soon as you get like even this all this talk of sort of sadness and depression. Uh, I'm, I don't really feel that stuff as. Uh, as strongly as I did before. And so, I, you know, but I'm not going to pretend that I am for the next show. Right. The next show will be about something else. What if it's date, uh, the date 19th on the tour and you're actually feeling quite peppy and you've sort of got to revisit yeah. all this anguish? That's, well, that's, that's performance. That's performance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what performance is. I can't believe you said that to me. Wow. Sorry, was that pretentious? <laughs> I was going... Slightly. <laughs> was it? <laughs> but it is, that's what that is. Yeah. No, it's just to... a horrible thing to have to say out loud, but actually you're right. You're definitely right. Well, you are, what should I have said? What, I'll do it again, I'll do it less okay. pretentious. What is it like to have to revisit all this anger? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure who you've become now. But uh, like get... a likeable guy. <laughs> well, oh, he doesn't know. Is that your impression of a likeable guy? <laughs> <laughs> is that... So off the mark. <laughs> um, let's actually get really deep. Um, who did you fancy the most when we did Pop World? Uh, who did you fancy? Well, uh, well, mainly. I mean, mainly because just they were in every week. McFly. McFly. Yeah. <laughs> so, but D like Dougie from McFly. Yeah. It's still. It's still there, isn't it? It still but annoys me. But you didn't get him. I didn't. Not. I didn't even attempt because I was so like frigid and stuck as a human being. Mm. And also, I felt like it would have been inappropriate to do anything with, like, even have a friendship with a pop star would have felt wrong because it would have been a conflict. Because we had to interview these people. With it, I didn't feel at the time that Paxman would have slept with Blair. So <laughs> it would be wrong to sleep with Dougie. And we were interviewing fun. these people. Maybe in the future when McFly are no longer in power. But <laughs> Um, all right, well, I think, I think we've got deep. Is that all your questions? Yeah. Now it says go to Q&A. Are you, why are you, why, why do you have feelings? <laughs> and who did you want to sleep with? Those are the questions. I think we covered everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you're writing new material, do you ever find yourself in a conflict between being funny and being honest? Good. Now we're talking. You this like that good. question? This is good. Okay. Okay. That should have been on my iPad. What's your name? Alex. No. Because <laughs> it's not a conflict, because they're the same thing, I think. I think that uh, it's only funny if it is honest. That's not true for most comedians, but certainly for a good one like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think that's where the funny is. Where the, where, where, where it's, and, and often I'll think, well, that's not qu it's not true enough. I've sort of got a bit of a laugh, but there's, I think there's a, there's a funnier, more true thing to be had. I love that answer. That was really great. Why did you look at me like I was lying then? No. <laughs> that was my listening face. Oh, was, your listening face is, I don't believe a word of this shit. This is a question from my friend who's not here who loves you. But um, she wants to know what your cat's name is. <gasps> love your cat's name. If it actually exists. I'm assuming there's it a, exists. There's a... There, why? Well, I wouldn't make up a cat. <laughs> I don't know Have why. Have you I not been that. listening? <laughs> no, I know. I'm glad they showed the clip so it's somewhat relevant. He's called Moses. Moses. That's cute. Okay, thank you. She'll be very happy about that. Is there any truth in the... I'm not sure if you, it, you could say it's a myth that you got sacked from Nickelodeon for being mean <laughs> and sarcastic to the children. <laughs> it's, it's pretty true. <laughs> that, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Are you going to do any more Grandma's House? Uh, we're not doing any more of that series just because I felt, I felt like we'd written all the pain out of us and, and it, to do any more would have been a bit gratuitous. Do you think that you're done with being personal that to that level i wouldn't do i wouldn't play a character called simon amstel again <laughs> right yeah hi yes um, hello do you feel like your best writing comes out of when you like 
force yourself to write for a show, like if you're in a creative mind rather than like naturally after like a certain time in your life? It's probably the most efficient way to actually get something done, but... Yeah. Oh, what's, uh, yeah, that was an actual question. I think that it's probably it's a, it's a combination of uh, somebody putting me in a room and saying you've got to do this by this time and having already had some sort of feeling or sadness. <laughs> and then if those two things go together, then something can get done. But you have to, I think you probably have to have both. For the last year, I've been trying to do uh, just, the, the, just the, it coming naturally with just the, you know, the natural... How's Whatever that? comes, well, it's, it's you know, it's taken a year because <laughs> nobody put me in a room to say you must do this by this time. So it's taken it's taken longer than it would have done. Are there any taboo subjects for you when you write? Uh, like what? Like what? No, when you <laughs> about personal experiences, for example, no matter how, how funny they might be, you might think, oh no, that's a bit too much for me to put in. If it's if it's funny and I have that feeling, oh, this might be too much. It will inevitably be the best joke in the show. And so it, then it has to go in, is, is the truth. There are things that, I, you know, I'm sensitive to, if there's a story involving another person, I'm sensitive to not including people's names <laughs> and, <laughs> and things like that. But, I, I, That's true, but yeah. I also, like, I feel like it's my, it's my way to discover who I am, this thing that I'm able to do, and to, to not include a bit, to go, okay, well, I better leave that alone. That's then, then me not doing a full self-discovery. That's me going, oh, I don't want to know about that bit. I do, I want to know about all of it. The comedian and the actor, my former friend, Mr. Why Simon Amstel. Why do you think former friend? We're still friends. <laughs> Simon Amstel.